In this video, I'm gonna walk through at a local gym near my house, how I would almost double session capacity just by changing programming a little bit and doubling up or tripling up people within stations. So I'm in a local facility. Well, the owner of this facility used to be my director of training at my old facility that I sold. Great trainer, knows a lot about it, he's exceptional. Right now, currently, his session caps that he has is 12 people. I kind of understand why he's doing it, but I'm gonna walk you through how you can change that and increase the session capacity, which means that you can train more people, you can reach more people, and ultimately you also can have less class times because now instead of having a lot of session times, you can just have a couple and you can fit more people in there. Currently, if you look kind of around, we've got this, a lot of turf, we've got some mats, we got all this, and there's squat racks. So we got the squat cages in a sense, and there's four of them along this row right here. And then there's another one right there, which is actually new. Prior to this, I would have, before that, I would have said we could easily get 16 in here. Now with that one, I would say we can get 20 people. And I'm gonna walk you through how you can do that. So if you are a strength training facility, you do strength and conditioning, you do CrossFit, you do a boot camp with this type of style, I'm gonna walk you through how I used to change it and how I changed the programming inside of my facility so that I could have ultimately in my facility in a slightly larger, not really that much bigger, we could have up to 40 people. But I'm gonna show you how they can get to 20 people just like that. Walk with me real quick. Most people that run strength and conditioning facilities have a typical class structure of programming where they do a warm up, they do strength, and the strength happens for anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes, and then they do what's called a Metcon, which is metabolic conditioning. And that's typically just conditioning. Now, it fluctuates based on the programming and the cycles that they're on and what they're trying to do, but in theory, you can have the same structure and framework for your classes so that it's consistent for your members, they get incredible results, and you can change the movement movements and how you do things and the time allotments for each little section inside of a class or session, you can change those to keep it new, fun, and interesting for your members. But here's what we got. On all of these, if I was gonna do this, you've got your warm up, you got plenty of space to do warm up with people. Warm up shouldn't take more than five minutes, in my opinion, if you're doing it correctly. And most gyms don't do this, but you should add in about three to five minutes of power development. So it could be just simple things of just stepping off a box, landing, literally going from here, dropping, um, med ball slams, any Anything, box jumps if you want to. I'm not really a big fan of those, but you can. And the reason why is because power development is one of the things that ultimately decreases faster with age. And so most of the demographics that come to fitness facilities like this are getting older. Definitely do some power movements early on after the warm up before they get into their strength stuff. So once you get into the strength stuff, what I would do, because you've got two racks here on the squat cages, um, we'll just actually take this one right here. So you've got both sides of this. What I would do is pair people up into twos and you've got one group right here on this side, and then you've got another group on this side because you got plenty of room and you technically have the TRXs right here. So what I would do is make my programming so that if we're using barbells or dumbbells or whatever, and they're using a bench, someone's using a bench here, or if it's a leg day and they're doing squats, you got squats, and then you have an accessory movement right here. You could have a movement on the ground. You could do body weight. You could do mobility. You can mix in a whole bunch of different things. You could even go as crazy as having six to a station where basically one station would be this, this, and mobility, you could do that to where you have three. That's definitely possible where you could literally just now you got six people across the entire thing. And so that's 24, add another six right there, you're at 30. So you could go to 30 people in this session. You just might run into some problems when you get into the cardio equipment and all that other stuff. But with this, by doing this, now in your strength sessions, the way that we used to do it is once you're done with your warm up, which is five minutes, once you're done with your power development, which is let's say no more than five minutes, you're 10 minutes into your session. Now, if you have an hour long session, what you can do is 15 minutes or 10 minutes minutes of strength, put them in their groups, tell them, hey, you have X amount of time to get your work in. Tell them today we're doing sets of, let's say eight to 10 or 10 to 12 or whatever it might be. And your goal is to try to do as many as you can during that time frame. well. And then you have a superset or a tri set if you have three people and work through those during that time frame. Instead of telling them, hey, you have to get three sets of 12 in. Instead of doing that, why don't you just let them move at their own pace? Because some days someone might be feeling a little bit slower. Someone might be feeling a little bit better and you can allow them to push themselves or pull back and be a little bit more conservative depending on how they're feeling based on what they did the night before or the week before, whatever it might be. So this creates a little bit more freedom where people don't have to get jacked up all the time inside of your gym and allows for you to be able to pack more people in. Then if you wanna move directly into conditioning, do that. You have plenty of time to do that, especially if you have a 45 minute class, you would have 20 minutes to do conditioning work. Or if you have an hour long, you could add another 10 minutes or even 15 minutes of strength and do it again. So you give them something else to do during that time frame. Same rotation happens, they just have 
new movements, new body parts that they're training, and it allows you to work on primary core movements that most people need to do, which are the five things, right? We need to squat, we need to hip hinge, we need to push, we need to pull, we need to lunge. So when you think about that, it allows people to rotate through that. It's easier for your trainers to understand because your trainers are gonna see it, and this is the framework that we use for every class. This is what we do. Your clients begin to recognize it. They're able to move up in weights, and you can change things very easily and make them harder by going to incline or going to decline on a bench, changing the hand positions, changing time under tension, right? There's lots of different things as a gym owner and a trainer that you understand that you can throw in to make that change. But from a business standpoint, when we're talking about business, this moves this facility from serving 12 people inside of a session to serving 20 people inside of a session easily. And if they did six, you can literally go to 30. So all of a sudden, now I need less sessions, which means I have lower payroll. I have higher energy inside of my classes and my sessions, and it allows me to reach more people. So now I can, I've almost doubled my capacity inside of my facility just by changing the way I do my programming. And what's beautiful about this is when I made this switch in my facility and our gym owners, when they do this, is that their clients actually love it. They enjoy it even more because they're working within groups, which is the point for many of them to be in a group fitness. And they're naturally going to, for the ones that are more introverted, they're naturally going to go to the other people that they enjoy working out with anyway. Because most of the time in group fitness classes, you've got little clicks that happen. And people just fit in that click and they want to work out and work out buddies and all this stuff. So it makes it more fun. And from a business standpoint, it makes all the sense in the world. So if you're not doing that, I highly suggest implementing and changing your programming to be a little bit more creative, to partner people up or do tri sets so that you can ultimately serve more people, change more lives and stack more cash. If you like this type of content, you want to learn more, we have our channel, the Gym Launch channel. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that like. Drop a comment down below if you agree, disagree. I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you have any feedback on any videos that you want us to make, on how to create a better experience for your clients, to reach more people through advertising, marketing, or best practices around sales and fulfillment, drop a comment down below and we'll put out some more content specifically just for you. Appreciate you guys and remember, gym owners rule.